In this lesson, we're going to learn about function notation. We'll talk about what it looks like, how it works, and how you can use it. Before we do that, let's talk about what a function is. A function is a rule that converts inputs into outputs. A lot of people like to think of a function as a machine, where you input a number, the machine does something to that number, for instance adds 4, and then gives a number out as an output. Often we use function notation to show the rule or the process that the machine is using to convert the input into an output. In this lesson, we'll learn how function notation works and how you can use it while working with mathematics. Let's begin by looking at an example of a function written using function notation. Here we have an f with an x in parentheses equals 3x plus 2. This is a mysterious looking equation until you understand what the parts of it are. Let's first talk about the f with the x in parentheses. That is called f of x, and that's how you read that. When you see the f with the x in parentheses, you will read that as f of x. It stands for function of x, and this entire thing is f of x equals 3x plus 2. This equation is the rule that will be used to convert your inputs into outputs. Before we see how this works, let's understand what each part of this means. First of all, the f in front is the name of the function. That could be any letter, although it's often f for function, and that is the name of the function. The x in parentheses is the input. In this case, the input is x. Over on the right, we have 3x plus 2. 3x plus 2 is the rule that is used to find the output. Understanding the various parts of this notation are important, so take a couple of minutes, pause the video, and review what we've just written on this page. Make sure you have it in your notes, and that you feel comfortable and familiar with the various parts of the function. When you return, we'll take a look at few, a few examples so that you can understand how it actually works. Let's go ahead and look at a few examples. Often you're going to be asked to evaluate a function. When we evaluate functions, we're actually finding the output. So in our first example, we have the function f of x equals 3x plus 2, and we're asked to find f of 5. When you see this, what this means is the input is 5, find the output. If the input in this function is 5, what is the output that we get? Here's how we do it. Step 1. Put the x in the equation in parentheses. Step 2. f of 5 is what we're trying to find, so we replace f of x with f of 5. And then, in the parentheses where we had an x, we will substitute a 5 in. f of 5 equals 3 times 5 plus 2. Now take this value right here, 3 times 5 plus 2, and evaluate that. You can simply use your calculator if you'd like to. 17. So f of 5 equals 17. What does that mean? When the input is 5, the output is 17. If we were to look at that in an input and output table, we'd have our 5 for the input, and 17 for the output. And if we looked on a graph, we'd find the point 5, 17. Of course, do you have to write all of this on your paper? No, the only thing you really need to have written on your paper is what's written right here. f of 5 equals 3 times 5 plus 2, and then the answer, f of 5 equals 17. Let's take a moment and look at another example. Here we have another function, f of x equals 5x plus 6. We want to find or evaluate f of 3. Step 1. Put your variable in parentheses. Step 2. Replace the x's with 3. Step 3. 5 times 3 plus 6. You can type this right into your calculator. Step 4, write the answer, f of 3 
equals 21. Remember what this means. The input is 3 and the output is 21 in this function. Let's look at a similar example that you can try yourselves. Let's look at the same function, f of x equals 5x plus 6. And in this case, let's find f of 10. Once you've copied down the function, put the variable in parentheses, replace the x's with 10, and then evaluate. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, let's have a look. The first thing we do is put the x in parentheses. Then we replace the x's with the number 10. We now have 5 times 10 plus 6, which I type into my calculator, or I could calculate it by hand. 56. f of 10 equals 56. That's the answer you should have on your page. Remember what that means. When the input is 10, the output is 56. Sometimes functions have a variable that appears in more than one place. Here's a new function called g of x. This function's name is g. And in this one, we have two x's, an x squared and a 3x. We want to find g of 2. The steps are the same. The first thing we do is put our x's in parentheses. Next, replace all of the x's with the number 2. Now, evaluate what's on the right-hand side. Again, you could do that by hand using order of operations, or you could just type that into your calculator. 9. So, g of 2 equals 9. In function g, when the input is 2, the output is 9. Let's try a similar problem with the same function, but a different input. Let's use the same function, g of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 1. And in this case, I'd like for you to find g of 4. Remember, first put your variables in parentheses, then substitute the input, 4, in place of the x's, and then evaluate. Pause the video here and come back when you're ready to check your work. Let's compare answers. The first step was to put the x's in parentheses. I had two x's this time. The next step is to replace the x's with the input, the number 4. g of 4 equals 4 squared plus 3 times 4 minus 1. Next, evaluate what's on the right hand side. You could calculate that by hand or just type it into your calculator. The output is 27 g of 4 equals 27. Remember what that means in function g, when the input is 4, the output is 27. Let's look at one last example today. This one will be a little bit more fun because your answer will be a fraction or a decimal. This time we have function h. h of x equals 1 half x minus 4 find h of 5. Please pause the video here and try this example. Let's compare our answers. The first thing we do is put the x in parentheses. Next, replace the x's with the input, which is 5. h of 5 equals 1 half times 5 minus 4. Now, we need to evaluate the right-hand side. We could do that by hand or by typing that directly into our graphing calculator. We get negative 3 halves or negative 1.5. You could write that output as negative 3 halves or as negative 1.5 and it wouldn't make any difference. When the input is 5, the output is negative 3 halves or negative 1 and a half. And that's how function notation works. Now you know everything you need to know in order to get started. You can find more information about function notation in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.